you actually have, it's based off of gender here, so you want to make sure that your shoes for women allows or has enough room to allow a three millimeter four foot splay. Please remember this is not toe splay, four foot splay. And then for men, it is a five millimeter splay. So that would be right one and a half on either side of the foot and then two and a half millimeters on either side of the foot. So when I have uh, patients and I'm doing a, let's call it a shoe fitting for them, as they are trying to decide on the appropriate shoes, I wanna make sure that they have at least a minimum of three millimeters room in that four foot to allow four foot splay. And then of course, three millimeters. Please remember that if you do not have that amount of splay and you prevent this tie bar mechanism from happening, what happens is you never get that proprioceptive trigger of the deep transverse metatarsal ligament, which means you don't have the proprioceptive trigger to stiffen that tie bar mechanism to create a sufficiently rigid lever. I hope that makes sense. So four foot splay, really you're looking at optimizing the stiffness and the proprioceptive stability of the foot versus just thinking, oh, I need enough room for my toes to spread, or I need enough room in my shoes so that I don't get neuromas, or if I have a bunion. There's a, a much more powerful importance of making sure that, sure that your shoes are wide enough and allow that splay. Already mentioned the difference between toe splay and forefoot splay. Toe splay is, yes, very important. It's really important from um, a lever perspective, but lever meaning that you are catapulting over your digits. So you want your digits to be spread out long and straight. The more spread straight and long that your digits are, it gives you um, a larger kind of catapult effect, thinking of it almost like um, someone who has a bigger foot size can create more power, it's just levers, it's just physics, right? Is that you wanna be able to create more power off of that MPJ lever that has been created. And then yes, the more toe splay, you actually create more stability. So if you have someone who has impaired balance and stability, you want to achieve improvements in balance through toe splay. Yeah, so, but please, please appreciate that difference. Almost everyone references toe splay and they unfortunately forget forefoot splay, not understanding that from a tensional power perspective, I would probably argue that forefoot splay is actually more important. So now how can we optimize that toe splay? Using any sort of toe spacer, correct toes. Um, there's so many other ones on the market. There's some cheapy ones that are on Amazon, whatever it is that allows you to create that toe splay. If you happen to have any clients or patients that have hammer toes, especially when they do different dynamic movements, so they have dynamic hammer toes, um, or they get hammer toes when they do short foot, then I recommend using correct toes from a daily movement perspective. Make sure that your shoes are wide enough, wear them in your shoes and when you're working out. And then of course, making sure that you have wide enough shoes to allow that three millimeter or that five millimeter splay that is appropriate. Thank you.